Hi everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another one of my crafting and card making videos. Today's video is all about creating a card that goes with an envelope that I've already created using a stencil from Sinus Stamp. I shared this envelope on my Instagram and I had so much fun creating it that I knew I needed to create a card to go inside. So here we go. So here is the envelope that I shared on Instagram yesterday, or maybe it was the day before. I loved how this envelope turned out. It was sort of an experiment with using a stencil. This is the Peony Bouquet stencil that's available over at simonsestamp.com. Um, I did that with some ink blending and then did some colored pencil on top. The colored pencil was definitely inspired by Kathy Rakusen's online class at onlinecardclasses.com, which you can still sign up for. But uh, I did a, a guest artist spot for day one of the class, and I fell in love with her technique of adding additional blending and kind of shadows to images that already have a base color. So something you've stenciled or even if you've colored with your Copics, she likes to add things with colored pencil. So more details on that are in the class if you want to click over and sign up for the class. It's still going. But anyway, I created this envelope and I absolutely loved it. And I want to create a card using the same technique, um, but keep it very, very simple. This actually took quite a bit of pencil coloring just because um, I really took my time with it. But I'm going to make a very, very simple five by seven card to go inside this envelope. I now have some white paper here. This is some Nina Classic Crest Solar White 110 pound cardstock. It's cut to three and a half inches wide by four and a half tall. And I'm going to do some ink blending. The first thing I'm going to do is tape down my cardstock to my work surface here so it doesn't slide around. And I'm planning to have my stencil kind of be down in this bottom corner. So I'm just going to make sure I tape it up here in these top two corners and that'll keep it in place. And then I'm going to tape the stencil right down here like this. We'll just tape that directly onto my cardstock and that'll be enough to hold it in place. I'm also going to tape the stencil down here to my work surface so it doesn't slide around. All right, I'm gonna be doing um, quite a bit of blending with different colors. And on the envelope, I only used Abandoned Coral as the main pink. You can see it right here, this Abandoned Coral, how it looks on top of this craft colored envelope. Now, because the craft color envelope kind of mutes the color a little bit, I don't want to put this Abandoned Coral directly onto white cardstock because it's gonna be really, really bright. So I'm actually going to first blend with Tattered Rose, just a little bit more of a subtle pink. And then if I need a little bit of additional color, I'll bring in some Abandoned Coral. So I'm starting out with Tattered Rose and I have a clean ink blending brush here because this is such a light color, I don't wanna use one that's dirty. You can see how it just has such a subtle color on that. And actually, before I get to that, we're going to use the yellow. I'm using scattered straw. And this is going to go just in the center of these two flowers. These are the only two centers that are on this ink blending area of the stencil. So I only need, need to do this twice. Just adding that kind of glow from the center of the flowers. Okay, now I'm going to take Tattered Rose and I'm going to start blending all of the pink areas. I think this is going to be a really good match for kind of the pink that resulted from the abandoned coral on top of the craft colored cardstock. I'm trying to avoid the areas with leaves. So I don't want too much color mixing on the leaves themselves. I'm going to be adding quite a bit of depth and shading with my colored pencils. So if I don't have a ton of pink up here, it's not a huge deal. All right, so I have that really soft pink now. And now I'm going to switch to my green, which is actually the bundled sage color is what I use on the envelope. I think it might be a little dark. So I'm gonna go in with shabby shutters. And since I'm doing smaller areas, I'm gonna to switch to a really small blending brush for this green. 
so I can bring a little bit of this green in here and mostly concentrating on the area that is nearest the flower and then using any residual ink on the blending brush to move up away. This is one of those reasons why you might want some different sizes of blender brushes because otherwise this would be really, really hard to do with a larger brush. All right, now I'm going to peel up this stencil. You can see the very soft blending on this piece of cardstock here. All right, so now I'm gonna do some colored pencils. And I'm doing just some really easy blending, just darkening up some of the areas. So I'm going to speed up the video while I'm coloring and you'll be able to see how it all comes together. Okay, I really like how this turned out, especially because it almost makes it look like everything was colored in with colored pencils, but I put quite a bit of ink down as kind of a base layer. So it saves a lot of time, but you still get that really soft look of uh, colored pencils. I think that looks kind of neat. For the greeting on my card, I'm going to use this stamp set from CZ Design. This is the Miss You Missy stamp set. I thought it would be really cool to put this, it's been too long just kind of up here in the top corner. I think it'd look really nice up there. All right, I'm using VersaFine Claire in the color Acorn. I'm going to adhere this to a white card base with some foam tape. And my card, my finished card size is five by seven. And that's gonna be the perfect size for my A7 envelope. All right, so here is the set. I really love how these turned out. I think changing up the colors I use for the ink blending over here just by using a softer pink really makes it match with the envelope a little bit better. I hope you guys enjoyed all of that stencil ink blending and some colored pencils. I love the colored pencil texture all over the entire area of the flowers. It makes me think, or it looks like, I colored the entire thing with colored pencils but I really did save a lot of time by doing all that ink blending first. So it's kind of a little quick tip to get that texture without having to spend all of that time. 
on screen, I've got two more videos for you to check out. These are some stenciling videos. I hope you guys enjoy going through those. And thank you so much for liking this video and subscribing and tuning in each time I share a video. Thanks so much, and I will catch you guys in another video very soon.